the chair has the authority to overrule that. Order, order by You go and read the standing order number 95 all the way to the conclusion, and you will understand it. Proceed. I, I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to contribute on two issues with regard to. I don't want to repeat what my, 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 my colleagues have just said. With regard to Article 142, for the establishment of offices in the public service by the president. It is very clear, Mr. Speaker, that the president in his performance of his functions may establish an office in the public service in accordance with the recommendations of the Public Service Commission. Mr. Speaker, if the, if the Public Service Commission has made recommendation, then that office will be established in accordance with the Constitution. To you, Mr. Speaker, as to whether a matter is constitutional or not, that is, the real, that is something that is supposed to be decided by a different arm of government. It is not incumbent upon this house to tell us this is a matter that is unconstitutional. We will be arrogating ourselves the powers of the High Court to make a determination as to whether a matter is constitutional or not constitutional. Our mandate, Mr. Speaker, is contained in Article 94 and 95 of the Constitution to enact laws. And if you look at our mandate, there are, it is fourfold, Mr. Speaker. It is to legislate, to oversight, to budget, and to represent. There is no way, Mr. Speaker, we have been given the mandate to arbitrate over disputes, Mr. Speaker. So, with regard to the issue of making law, we are the house that makes law. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, with regard to establishment of offices, if people took time to read the report of the of jailer, they would see that uh, these offices are established for good reason. And one of the reasons why offices are established by the executive in, with the concurrence of the Public Service Commission is to enable the executive to recruit and to deploy the number of either officers or in this case the CSS that require to deliver the programs of that particular government. Mr. Mr. Speaker, you just don't walk into a government and you are unskilled because you don't have the people. You look for the people and the constitution gives you the power to do so. Mr. Speaker, in our oversight role, it is incumbent upon us to determine as to whether we have allocated sufficient money under the budget or if the money is being used for the right purposes. That is our role, Mr. Speaker. It is not our role to curtail the functions of the executive. And, Mr. Speaker, I would like to say that, um, you know, there are so many things that have been talked about, the purported people to be appointed as CSS. Mr. Speaker, it has been said that in fact failures have been uh, will, be, uh, will be appointed, people who lost elections. I don't know when losing election became a crime in this country. People lose elections. In the 2022, people lost elections. In the 2017, people lost elections. In the 2013, 2013 people lost elections. People have been losing elections from time in memorial, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Mr. Speaker, Article 19. 27.4 of the Constitution says, no person shall be discriminated on account of anything, including marital status, pregnancy, or even losing an election, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, if you cannot discriminate somebody on, on the basis of pregnancy, surely, even losing an election, you cannot be discriminated, Mr. Speaker. Even on account of color, even on account of, on account of color, Mr. Speaker, the only, the only, the only, the only... What's your point of order, Rafael Wanjala? Mr. Speaker, you have heard clearly on the member who's noting that this government does not discriminate against even women who are pregnant. And just recently, KRA discriminated against pregnant women in, in, in that department. And that is his government of Kenya Kwisha. And HIV. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Mr. Speaker. 
the honorable speaker. Proceed, proceed, Chief Governor. I, I thank you, honorable speaker. Thank you, honorable speaker. In fact, the honorable gentleman, very good.